Let's take a look at the case structure. When you first place the case structure, it's defaulting to the Boolean type for the selector terminal located on the left. And you see it has a characteristic green color indicating, indicating Boolean data type. Then we can then choose between two possible sub diagrams to execute, depending on whether or not the selector is true or false. So I'll begin by creating a default control for our selector terminal. And then just as some examples for um, some sub diagrams, let me place several or a couple uh, controls externally and I'll na label those A and B. And let's scoot those off to the left and move that out of the way a little bit as well. And you can reshape the case structure to be as small or as large as needed. So in the true case, I'm going to compute the sum of the two inputs A and B. And I'll present that as the output and I'll call that Y. So let me create an indicator for that. Nudge that over a little bit and call that Y. Now if you look carefully at the tunnel on the output side, you see that it's white and this is actually indicating that not all of the subdiagrams generate a valid value for the output. So for the false diagram, let me do a different computation and I'll do A minus B when the selector terminal is false. Incidentally, while I had that subtraction node selected, I just used the up arrow to do a minor or a fine adjustment of its position. And again, if you look carefully here, you can see that as soon as I get that uh, connection established, then the output tunnel becomes solid colored instead of having that white color. Another place where you might see a problem here is that if you look at the broken run arrow, it also indicates that we're missing one or more assignments. So I'll go ahead and complete that connection. So again, true adds the values, false subtracts the values, and perhaps just to give a little better visual indicator that these two sub diagrams are different, I'll move that around a little bit. So that way as we scroll through the sub diagrams, it's easier to see the difference. So let's give some values for A and B and watch what happens. Okay, with the control or the Boolean control dark, that's indicating false. And so we do the subtraction. We got minus three. Now it's true and we do the addition instead. Now supposing you want to have more sub diagrams to execute than just two. So I'll switch this out to a numeric control and representation, I will choose I32, so that's an integer type. And I'll label this type, so that's the type of computation that we're trying to do. Notice how the selector terminal changes color to match the integer data type. Again, here it's green for Boolean. Now it's blue for integer. And if you also look carefully at the top for the sub -di diagram selection, that also now reflects a numerical value instead of Boolean. So starting out with zero as the default and one as the other sub diagram, supposing I wanted the default value to be something else. And at this point, I'm just merely um, clicking and typing. It says that 
we need to have a default specified for something because of course the integer data type can have all sorts of possible values. So we say that if it's zero, we get one subdiagram, but if it's one or any other value, we pick some other, or we pick the other subdiagram. So zero is picking our subtraction, as we can see here. One is picking the addition. And as we might expect, if we pick some other value for type, then we always do the default of addition. Now if I wanted to add an additional subdiagram, I have some options here about adding and deleting cases, duplicating cases and so on. So you're, I'd encourage you to take a look at those uh, as, as you have need for those. Another technique I'd like to point out that's kind of nice is if we say a range of values like 2 dot dot 5, that's a, a, another way of skipping the, the need to have a subdiagram for uh, value 2, value 3, and so on. We can, we can have a range of values. Incidentally, if we would have said 2 dot dot, that simply means 2 and all values greater than 2 as well. So for this case, I'll just simply generate a constant of minus 888. And for this case, what I'd like to illustrate is instead of actually wiring a value to the tunnel, if we pick use default if unwired, that's another way of um, ensuring that all of the cases generate valid output. And you can see that with kind of the characteristic little uh, white dot at the center of it right now. So let's give this a shot. Remember, zero is supposed to do subtraction. One does addition. Let's make sure this all works. This is supposed to generate the constant minus 888. That's all looking fine. And case number six. Apparently the default value for type double is zero. And if we pick some value that we have not specified, then of course we revert to the default operation.